the culture is the kicks, I'm Shifu Payne, and happy Christmas to you and to your loved ones. To you, to your family, and to the whole wide I can't do it! <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, but I, I just can't help but not get into the Christmas spirit this year. Especially after these last couple of years. I mean, this is a time of year that's all about peace and love and charity and goodwill to everyone and holding the ones you love dear. But with a looming sense of existential meaninglessness, with looming debt from university, with, with feelings of worthlessness and general pissed off energy, I just, I just can't get into the spirit this year. Will today's film help in that? What do you fucking think? Oh, right, yeah, and it is Chan Man time to do the thing. Directed and written by Stanley Tong, someone that has worked with Chan multiple times, including for Rumble in the Bronx, First Strike, Super Cop, and The Myth. Speaking of The Myth, this 2017 film is technically a sequel to that 2005 production, which is weird as they do differ in execution so drastically. What do I mean by this? Let's find out, starting with the plot. Jackie plays Jack. Plot twist? An archaeological professor who's asked by an Indian princess playing by Disha Patani, who disguises herself as a doctor for reasons, and asks him to recover the lost treasures of the Kingdom of Magda, which is made complicated by a greedy millionaire who is also looking for the treasure to become even more rich, because that is always a reliable motivation. Jack and his team enlist the help of a treasure hunter played by Arif Rahman, and seek the lost treasure before the millionaire gets their hands on it. I mean, let's be honest here, the plot is fairly cookie cutter, but in fairness, who really goes to a martial arts film for the plot? Aside from me. But this film still has some major issues with it, and I'll get into my main one at the end, but for right now, let's start with the CG. The film opens with a scene showing the backstory for the treasure, where it came from, who hid it, why it was hidden, etc. The problem is that this was apparently made on a PS2. I mean, look at this mess. Chan is in there too, of course. Between this and his ancestor in the myth, Jackie's ancestors really got around. It just seems so flat and so empty. You kind of can't help but tune it out. Oh, and then there's this. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so dead behind the eyes! This is making Food Fight look like Ratatouille! And the effects don't get much better throughout. I mean, I could go through this elaborate car chase with obviously fake cars ripped straight from GTA. But I'll leave it off with this. A computer-generated vomiting lion. Ah, how far our computer technology has come. Another problem I have is with this character. Patani plays the confusingly disguised princess. I mean, in terms of character, she's there, doing stuff and aiding in the plot, but not with any actual development or layering of character. But my main issue is actually this. Teach Groot give her acting lessons. Okay, that's unfair. The version I saw was the English dub version from the original Mandarin, so it may very well be that this is someone dubbing in and translating the lines. But if not love, here's a number for an acting coach. You can join the class with Godot. Sure, I can nitpick until the cows come home, but... The fight scene! Where's the fight scene? Well, let's actually take a look at this film's fight scenes and see what the Chan Man has for us today. The scene we're looking at today takes place in the snowy dunes as Chan and his team look for a cave containing the lost soldiers that were hiding the treasure, and Chan and Raman have a quick sparring session. Now, I know it seems weird that we're looking at this particular scene, seeing as how there are other fight scenes which are more in line with the Chan Man stylings, but A, this is set in the snow and it's December, B, there are wolves in it, automatic win, and C, it's my show, shut up. Oh, my mistake, these are the wolves from Twilight. Quick, hide your babies before one imprints on them! Chan and Raman go to scare away the pack so that they don't get in the way of their work, but before then have a brief session of sparring to see what Raman remembers of his training. It starts with some hand-to-hand. -hand. My initial instinct is to say it's Wing Chun, but the stance looks off from Jackie, and not as tight as a Wing Chun stance usually is. It could, however, be another style, Southern Shaolin or Hung Ga, ones with wider styles, more ideal for being on snow and ice like this. Either way, from what we can see, both nice block and trap each other. Jackie in particular traps Raman in this crosshold, which I'm not sure on, as there is that risk with both arms engaged only trapping one arm. The same again here as Raman traps Jan's arm, both at the wrist and the shoulder. The wrist could be enough for a quick trap preceding another attack. The ideal move here for Raman here would probably be something like a knee to the abdomen, or even a neck pin with his hand on that shoulder. I mean, he wouldn't have far to go. Okay, I need to slow that down. It looks like Raman had Chan in a lock with his elbow, so Chan bent his held elbow, which somehow sent Raman's arm reeling back before Chan grabbed Raman's wrist and went to put him into a pin. 
I don't know how we did that, as that goes against some law of motion. If Chan had shin kicked him and then pinned him when distracted, that would have made sense. Whatever. Ramen interrupts the pin and goes in for another attack, but Chan spins him around, still holding his arm, which could lead to some lock, but no, a push works too. They then move to kicks, which starts with Chan going to literally step on Ramen's toes. Put a pin on that. Ramen goes to do a shin kick, which Chan evades. Both step into wider stances across from each other. Chan knocks Ramen using his shoulder before using his own knee to collapse Ramen's knee. Whatever. Ramen recovers and goes into a strike before performing a sweep, a toe kick, and then more hand to hand. It's safe to say that this is Northern Shaolin, but what a surprise I brought that up. Ramen tries an elbow before a spearing attack, but Chan once again has him in another lock, but before kicking him in the sides of the knees and then striking at his torso. Ramen goes in to strike again. Dude, at this point, I would pick another strategy if he keeps beating you in the same way, which Chan does, pushing him into several more pins and locks, including two at the throat. Ramen escapes the hold by collapsing Chan's elbow and twisting himself free, but in all this twisting, he forgot to create distance as Chan collapses his knee and puts him into an even a more vulnerable position. But this time, Ramen headbutts Chan in the abdomen to get free. Who else thought he got him in the bow staff? Well, so did Chan, as he straight up knees him in the crotch. Point between this and Frank with the shiv last week, we're really racking up some violations of the bro code here. Chan then attacks Ramen's throat, which Ramen retaliates with using a roundhouse, a roundhouse which Chan catches before proceeding with a series of elbow strikes. Wait, did Chan just one-inch punch ramen? Evidently, that extra roll in Enter the Dragon paid off in the end. The session ends as they go ahead and return to camp, with them proceeding to properly scare off the wolves in the most humane and sympathetic way. Oi! Oi, 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 oi! This is their turf! This was their turf first! Respect their rights! Got first Idaho, then Montana, and now here! I expected better from you, Jackie! Now naturally, you may be thinking that I've copped out seeing as how I've covered a sparring scene instead of an actual fight scene. So tell you what, how about if I cover a later portion with a later fight scene, just a little bit, as it does lead into the ending, and I do have something to say about it. In this scene, it's revealed that the treasure all along was knowledge. Medical, scientific, spiritual, things which make a positive difference in the lives of others. Oh, what a solid, good moral lesson about true treasures of the world. And boy, what a rare and indescribable find. I mean, imagine what's in here. Could be the cure to cancer, maybe. Spiritual enlightenment. So many... Oh, my scholar brain. Ancient artifacts, hundreds of years old, containing sacred knowledge, and you use them in such a potentially damaging way. That's like using a first edition Edda as a coaster. Oh, and what about the ending? Well, these monks all come in, wanting to bask in this holy sight. The message being that such knowledge belongs to the people. And what is their epilogue? What happens to the antagonist? What about the university? Oh, don't worry. Bollywood musical number time! Yeah. You're not mistaken. There's not an actual ending here. The rich guy is just like, yeah, fuck this, let's dance. Now, look, I know that typically Hong Kong productions don't really have epilogues. They just tend to end. But I mean, with so many loose ends... The side characters? Never seen again in the actual story? This guy gives up. As the last note to leave on too? What a load of bollocks. But that's not even the main problem with this film, as there is another, more staggering, potentially film-ruining problem here. In my opinion, Jackie Chan should not have been the main character in this film. Chan exists in this film as a fixed character. Nothing changes for him. No growth or development. Nothing is impacted personally for him. Stuff just happens to Jackie, with no real goal other than just finds the MacGuffin. Which is odd, because there was another character here that would have probably made for a better protagonist. And that's Raman's character. He starts off as a self-serving treasure hunter, wanting money and adventure more than betterment or discovery. But throughout the course of the film, he learns to consider his team more, opening up and valuing them more. Wouldn't this end reveal have been more thematically relevant if this changed his outlook so that both he and the antagonist were learning this lesson, acting as foils for one another, him growing and accepting this lesson, while the other refuses and blindly pursues his greed which becomes his downfall. In an actual ending, of course. If you really wanted Jackie in this film, I feel as though reducing his role to more of a mentorship and having Raman take the lead would have been a stronger idea. You could even have the theme of passing the torch if you retain it being a spiritual sequel to an earlier film. Sure, maybe I'm valuing my own headcanon over the actual pieces of this film, but I mean, with a film like this, how can I not? What, what did I like? 
Well, the action is good. This is a Jackie Chan film with the director of Rumble in the Bronx. You know the action is going to be good. There's the decent lesson between Jackie and Ramen about adapting to terrain and being flexible with strategy in different contexts. But despite the overall moral lesson of the film being a good one about the value of knowledge and bettering lives instead of greedily wanting everything for yourself, it's held down by the poor execution. Which I can sum up thusly. A vomiting lion, no actual ending, and no need to have your protagonist. I mean, it's a real shame that this is such a downer of a start to December. I mean, maybe we can only go up from here. I certainly hope so. Thank you all for watching this week's video, and in the comments let me know if you've seen this film and what your opinion was on it. <sighs> my personal opinion? This has kind of caused me to reevaluate my love for Jackie Chan. I... I... It's... It's a shame to have to say that, really. Like, I feel as though it's just... I'm gonna be looking at his films differently now, and not in a good way. It's a shame, because this was the same team as with Rumble in the Bronx. You would think this would be a great film. It was just so lazy, and just so... <sighs> I don't know. But with that, thank you all for watching, everyone, and until next time, peace be with you.